Dear students, uh, we will be discussing today non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, usually referred to as NSAIDs. Uh, the importance of NSAIDs cannot be ruled out as it is used in different clinical conditions for the management of pain. Uh, focus is on the pathway for genesis of prostaglandins or the pain mediators and in the clinical uses of NSAIDs and broader classification of analgesics as well. So, analgesics are broadly classified as narcotic analgesics where the prototype drug is, 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 is morphine and then there is a non-narcotic analgesics where the prototype drug is pestamol or penocetine is there as a second uh, and then NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as we refer to earlier and that is the prototype drug is uh, aspirin. So, aspirin represents the 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 yes, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, the pathway phospholipid layer is present in each cell membrane and it is converted into arachidonic acid through the phospholipase A2. Now, phospholipase A2 enzyme will 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 help in the synthesis of arachidonic acids and then it is converted through the cellular oxygenases into the respective prostaglandins you see so cellular oxygenase 2 will produce inflammatory prostaglandins where is uh, it produces pain and boraxia it produces hyperalgesia and some synthesis of pro-inflammatory uh, mediators where cellular oxygenase 1 is usually pre preparing this um, uh, they are primitive prostaglandin and primitive prostaglandins like pg2alpha that helps in uterine contraction and yeah, there is PGE2 and PGI2 that produces vasodilation against the uh, vasoconstrictor, naturally occurring vasoconstrictor and the naturally occurring vasoconstrictor are epinephrine and norepinephrine, so many other mediators as well. So in nutshell, nutshell there are friendly prostaglandins that maintain a different normal physiological function like uh, PGI2 is Going to inhibit the hydrochloric acid secretion and helps in regulating the hydrochloric acid secretion, especially in a condition of peptic ulcer or uh, gastric ulcer. So you see, PG2 alpha, PG2 stimulates the synthesis of mucus and its secretion as well. So thus, it this helps uh, uh, as a protective against a peptic ulcer. Now on the other side, uh, some of the prostaglandins are converted into prostacyclines and thromboxane A2 where thromboxane A2 is is, 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 a, is a vasoconstrictor so on the other side if it is thromboxane A2 is vasoconstrictor so PGI2 or prostacycline prostacycline is platelet inactivator or plat it helps in platelet inactivation there is vasodilatory phenomena of the prostacycline so at the same time there is platelet aggregation as well now if we block this pathway through so the equilibrium will be shifted towards left and then for, through the five lip oxygenase pathway arachidonic acid will be will be will be converted into leukotrienes and these leukotrienes are powerful chemotactic agent and it will produce bronchospasm as well as release of inflammatory cytokines so thus thus Thus, the use of NSAIDs or the drugs that is going to inhibit this cyclooxygenase will shift the equilibrium to our left. So, so managing pain in patients having a prehistory of asthma can be dangerous as well. Uh, uh, a technical point to remember is that uh, there are certain promoters of this um, enzyme. It is bradykinin, angiotensin and stress. So try to avoid stress and regarding stress we have already uploaded a video now uh, going to the other aspects that what are the inhibitors of this possible FS so steroids are the inhibitors and once we give steroids so neither this pathway will will be will be there nor this right pathway will be there meaning that arachidonic acid will not be synthesized so therefore perhaps steroids are very good drugs you can use in the management of asthma as well as they are anti-inflammatory as well. Now what happens once we give aspirin, so aspirin is going to inhibit this pathway as we did discuss. 
but scientists have been successful in preparing uh, mm, selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors and perhaps then they are free of this possible adverse effects that is associated with aspirin so what is important that in case of certain physiological condition like pregnancy some certain prostaglandin helps in opening up the maintenance of the potency of the ductus arteriosus so thus if we give insects so the prostaglandin responsible for the maintenance of the potency of ductus arteriosus will be no longer there and then then it may lead to the early closure of ductus arteriosus so if you are going to manage certain pains in third trimester of pregnancy like low back pain or any other clinical condition that requires the use of insects there pain analgesic therapy so you should be quite vigilant not to use uh, insects as that may lead to the early closure of ductus arteriosus and can help serious catastrophic effect against the fetus uh, if your patient is already managed with the uh, antihypertensive drugs so so you know there are certain prostaglandins that helps in the uh, renal vasodilation against the naturally occurring vasoconstrictor norepinephrine and epinephrine so if you give insects so the prostaglandins uh, phenomena against that is that is renal vasodilation will be inhibited so thus a ma uh, a managed hypertension may require ultra attention as the antihypertensive therapy may fail due to the use of insects because the naturally occurring vasodilation phenomena will be no longer there due to the insects then uh, asthma management as we did discuss here so you cannot use uh, insects in patient having a prehistory of asthma as it will shift the equilibrium to our left and as we discuss and may aggravate the asthma uh, clinical conditions so what are the therapeutic uses therapeutic uses are there's insects are used as analgesics antipyretic and anti-inflammatory purposes and then the side effect of possible side effects of um, uh, insects are gi upsets and then the nephrotoxicity this is very important because nephrotoxicity is sometimes underestimated and then it can create problem for your patients, particularly in children, its use should be avoided. So in a nutshell, if we are not going to use for the management of low back pain uh, with the insert, then the question is which particular analgesic drug should be given. So the answer is that paracetamol or non-narcotic analgesic should be given uh, or the best way is the physical maneuvers or, or fomentation. Now, having said that, uh, uh, it is important that for the antipyretic purpose, for antipyretic effect of aspirin is very predominant, uh, especially in the patient having paraxia. In normal individuals, it is not going to produce uh, uh, antipyretic effects or doesn't does not produce further fall in the body temperature because uh, of the Vasodilation phenomena is very is very is very evident in patient having high grade fever. Thank you.